Now hopefully you saw my video the other day where we started to try out this new powder, Alliant Reloader TS 15.5. We tried it in uh, 223 and 22250. In 223 with 75 grain bullets, it did okay, but nothing spectacular because this, this powder has got pretty big granules. It's, it's a bulky powder, kind of like Reloader 16. Was really hoping for the smaller granules like a Reloader 15 or a Vitivori N540, but that's not what we've got. Now in 22250, we had plenty of case capacity and that wasn't really an issue, but in 223, the, the case filled up pretty fast. Well, today I wanna shoot 308 and six millimeter arc. In 308, I wanna shoot this big Burger 200.20X bullet. Alliant provides load data for some 175 grain bullets, some 180s, 185s, and then 200s. So this is gonna be a heavy bullet powder, it looks like for 308. Now these, these Burger bullets are extremely long, and my understanding, the guys that shoot these in F-Class, in FTR competition, with big 30-inch long barrels and chambers with long throats so they can seat these things way out long and have a lot of room for powder. And I wanna do the same thing. Now my, my Krieger AR-10 barrel has their standard 308 chamber. So my max overall length is right at 3.050. So I wanna back off that about 20 thousandths and shoot 3.030 inches of overall length. So 2.8 would be normal standard Sammy Max overall length. So these are extremely long. They're not gonna fit in a magazine. We're gonna single feed them and we'll just see what happens. I'm gonna go by the load data that Alliant provides for the uh, for the Burger 200 grain hybrid target, the, the standard hybrid target, which means a max charge of 44.1 grains. I'm a little bit nervous about this one because Alliant also has data for the 200 grain Sierra Match King and they show a max charge of 42.9. So hopefully we're not getting into trouble. We're gonna shoot four tenths of a grain increments because I want to make sure that I'm starting low enough. So that we're, we're going to start at 42.5 and then work our way up to 44.1. It says Lapua Palma Brass, GM205M Primers, and we'll just see what happens. Case capacity looks fine here. If these are compressed, it's not by much. So plenty of room to work up from here later if we don't see the sort of numbers we're after. Now, I'm not really sure what sort of velocities to be on the lookout for here. I haven't shot a ton of heavy bullets in this gun, so not sure where we should be. So I loaded up five rounds with Hodgton Varget, and that's 42.0 grains. That should be a reasonably stout load of Varget that should give us a good idea of about where we should be, hopefully. The next loads for today in six millimeter arc are gonna be with the 108 grain Hornady ELD match. Now with the six arc, we don't have any load data. I basically just weighed out a few charges to see how high could we possibly go. 30.0 and 29.5 were a little fuller than I wanted to see, but 29.0 looked like something we could work with. So that's what I went with. Now in the Hornady seating die, I have a seating stem specially made for this bullet. So there really wasn't any significant bullet damage. The top charge of 29.0 was definitely very compressed and we got a little bit of a line around the bullet, but not too bad. So it looks like, you know, maybe we could go up a little bit more if we needed to. I don't think it's gonna be necessary because I just don't think this powder is going to be ideal for six arc. So the Hornady manual has gas gun data that maxes out at 52,000 PSI. And then they've got bolt gun data that goes to 62,000 PSI. Well, even with their gas gun data, for the 108 grain ELD match, Alliant Reloader 15 has a max charge of 27.6. Over in the, the bolt gun data, it's 28.9. So if we can shoot 28.9 grains of Reloader 15 in six arc, surely to God we can shoot 29.0 of 15.5. That is slower burning and bulkier and all of that. So I really don't have any fear of pressure today with six arc. We're gonna be on our toes, we're gonna to watch out, we're gonna check our brass and pay attention to how the gun runs and all of that. But I would be shocked if we, if we ran into pressure. I would also be shocked if we really see outstanding velocity numbers. I think they might end up being kind of lame. As a comparison, in six arc, we're gonna shoot Power Pro 2000 MR. I just loaded up five rounds with 30 grains of Power Pro 2000 MR. So overall length, we're gonna shoot 2.260, standard AR magazine length, and that puts us about 20 thousandths off the lands. And that's a change. Whenever I first got this barrel and hadn't broken it in at all, I think we had to shoot this bullet down at 2.24 something to make sure it fit. But now that my throat is eroding a little bit, we're getting broke in, I'm hitting the lands at around 2.280. So 2.260, about 20 thousandths of jump. So it fits just perfect. 
So I'm trying to turn this video around quick, so I've already loaded the ammo. There wasn't really much to see. Seating went smoothly. Like I mentioned, the six arc, we had a stem just for this bullet in the Hornady seating die, and that went really good. And I had a Hornady stem that fit the Burger 220X pretty well also. So everything went nice and smooth. Now with the six arc, we are using the, the Grendel brass that we formed in my last six arc video. And those have already been fired once, so they're already formed and ready to go. So that's about it. I'm pretty excited. Let's get to the range. Okay, so the range is 100 yards. And what you see up here is the shot marker electronic target system. There are sensors down at the target at the four corners of the target that connect back here and show us what's going on. Up in the top right corner, you'll see the group size and the velocity information. That velocity is at the target. I saw in the last video someone asked about the discrepancy. So the velocities I'm talking about here at the bench are taken with the lab radar, and those are muzzle velocities. What you see in the top right corner are the target velocity. Another thing you might notice on shot marker sometimes is the group not lining up perfectly between the target camera and the shot marker. And what that's about is if I don't draw my target and place my dots on the perfect spot on my poster board, they don't line up with shot marker. Or if I hang the target crooked, will cause a discrepancy between what you see up there and what you see over there. It really does not matter at all. We're interested in the size of the groups, not really where it's hitting. So I thought I'd mention that. Okay, we're gonna start with 308. This is an aero precision setup with a Krieger barrel. This is a Krieger M110, one and 11 twist. So it's a 20 incher. So let's start out with our test load of, of Varget. Yep, 42.0 grains of Varget. And before we shoot one, I wanna cycle one through and make sure I did clear the, the rifling with my overall length. Looks good. If the bullet moved at all, it's not enough for me to see with the naked eye. So let's see what this velocity looks like. And this gun's sighted in for 168 grain bullets. We're gonna shoot at this the dot in the center here. Hopefully we don't need to make a scope adjustment. I think we'll be fine. So that was 2,400 feet per second, and we hit four MOA high. I thought I was seeing like the bullet going through the target sideways, but it's that bug down there. So I am gonna go ahead and bring the, the scope down four MOA. Actually, I'm gonna go three and three quarters, but I'm gonna to continue to shoot at the same dot. So this shot really won't matter. So we'll hide it. And now I'm gonna shoot at that dot above so that we don't mess up two dots. That makes sense? Is that confusing enough for you? <laughs> Guess I should look at that piece of brass. That looks pretty good. That first velocity was only 2,400 feet per second. Holy crap, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a fun day, folks. Okay, that velocity ended up being 2391, standard deviation 12.3, and the group was a half inch. Fantastic. All right, let's move over to this dot here, and we'll get started with our 15.5 loads. First up, 42.5 grains. All right, our first velocity was 2424. I'm not seeing anything that concerns me on this first piece of brass. Primer's still nice and rounded. No crazy marks and smears. I do have a JP high pressure bolt in this gun. Just throwing that out there. All right, let's see if we can shoot a group. So that velocity ended up being 2412, standard deviation 7.4, and the group was 1.23 inches with all of this vertical stringing. It looks like the velocity is going to be pretty darn close to Varget, right? So we shot 42.0 grains of Varget, and that was 2391. Now we're 42.5 grains of Reloader 15.5, and we're up to 2412. So that's awfully close. And you know, back to our powder granule size, it looks pretty close to Varget. So, seeing some similarities there, I guess. I consider this a good thing. Varget's a good powder. Okay, next up, 42.9 grains.
Velocity up to 2435. Standard deviation 5.4. I'm liking these SD numbers. And th these shots feel good. And I guess we were spoiled by that Varget group. So we know the bullet and the gun can get along. But we just seem to be in a pretty wild region here, don't we? Brass looked good, so let's keep going. 43.3 grains. Okay, so our brass looks really good. Velocity up to 2456. Standard deviation 7.7. .7 and 1.26 inch group. At least we managed to put three of them in close there. I guess the last group, these three were pretty close. But hmm, two more to go. All right, 43.7 is next. This first piece of brass looks okay. So velocity is 2481, standard deviation 7.2, extreme spread 19. And another group that's a little over an inch. This is frustrating. This is very frustrating. I wish I had five more shots of that Varget load. Because I can't help but, you know, question myself, question the gun, what's going on, why is this happening. I feel like I'm shooting good today. At least these SD numbers are incredible. All right, the brass still looks fine. So our last load here, 44.1 grains. All right, our final velocity, 2502. 8.6 standard deviation group was 1.08 inches i thought we were going to have our first one under an inch until that last shot yep we were at 0.76 inches up to there well that's okay makes me want to try this bullet with varget let me go hang a fresh target and we'll move on to six arc first up with six arc is going to be our verification load with 30 grains of power pro 2000 mr the gun's cold and it's currently sighted in for 85 grain bullets, so we'll see where these land. Okay, so that group was 0.58 inches, velocity 2590, standard deviation 15.5. Our first group with reloader 15.5 is 27.4 grains. First piece of brass looks really good. Yep, looks good. So we're 0.79 inches, velocity 2533, standard deviation 5.1. We got a ways to go with velocity, but remember we're shooting four tenths of a grain increments. So we might see a pretty significant difference between charge weights. So I did get a couple spicy marks here on the brass and a little bit of a burr on one of them. Everything else seems fine. I think what's going on is this is maybe just a mistuned gas system, you know? I don't know, we'll keep going. But if it gets a whole lot worse, we might be in trouble. Okay, 
So I went in and grabbed my other notebook to be sure. So that, that velocity was 2579, standard deviation 16.3, group was 1.15 inches. And I got a couple more pieces of brass with burrs on at that time. I think we're almost done, folks. I went in to get another notebook to be sure. So the 105 grain Hornady Black factory ammo, 105 grain. This gun shot it at 2640. And if we go back to one of my previous videos, we shot this 108 grain ELD match with CFE 223. And with 30 grains of CFE 223, we hit 2679. So I think, so I wanna shoot at least one more group. I expect the velocities to be about 2620. And I'll see what the brass, that might be the last one we shoot. I don't know, we'll see how bad it is. Okay, here we go, 28.2 grains. I need to clear shot marker. All right, let's see what happens. All right, so the wheels are kind of coming off here. 1.6 inches, spraying them all over the place. Velocity was 2601, so didn't pick up as much as I thought we would. Standard deviation, 13.1. So the brass damage doesn't seem to be getting any worse. The primers aren't getting any flatter. We haven't pierced any primers. We haven't popped any primers. So against my better judgment, I'm gonna shoot at least one more. So let's see what 28.6 does. You know what, I think that's enough torn up brass for today. So the group was awful, 1.38 inches, velocity was 26.29, standard deviation 6.2. Let's get back to the bitch. Okay, let's have a look at some brass. This is our max charge from the 308. Not really seeing much going on here. Just good looking brass. Tell you what, we could check the primer pockets. Stand by. The first couple that I tried really seemed to come out easy, so I went ahead and decap all of those and a bunch more. I'm a little primer pocket go no go gauge. The, the red, sh red side should not fit into the pocket. No, it doesn't. Okay, I was just getting nervous over nothing. And yeah, that one goes in a bit, but that might've been from a previous firing. All right, we're good. They just seem to be decapping especially easy. And it made me nervous. So no problems with 308. So now let me show you the carnage. This was the last row I shot. That is gnarly. Then here's the next one over. That, eh, we got a, little, got a little smear on it there. Let me decap these. We'll check and see what these primer pockets are like. I just spotted another problem that I hadn't noticed before, but yeah, primer pockets are smoked. And eh, that was not too bad, but not too good either. Here's the third one. Yeah, that one's absolutely smoked. Look at what happened there. Here are the other two. Look, look at that one. So that is not a case head separation or anything like that forming. This goes back to the last six millimeter arc video when we were forming these. Like all of the, like we had, we had formed some, some six arc brass from 762 by 39, and they all had that from the die. That's crazy, man. Looks like that rim is bent as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Let's see if the, the lower ones have that same, that was our middle charge. There's the next one down. And then that's one of our starting charge, much less pronounced. Here's a bunch from the first row. That's a little bit freaky. This is my first time ever seeing this. Man, that's bizarre. Yeah, I don't like that at all. 
So you guys that have made six arc brass from your, from your Grendel brass, is it normal to see that forming? Are you guys seeing this? It's got me a little bit freaked out. Now, like this brass, here's what I was starting with today. And these were fired with a full power load and an 85 grain bullet to complete their forming. All I did to these that I, that I fired today was anneal them, size them, load them up like normal. A little bit weird, but I mean, okay, back to today's video. All of this is bad. So my thoughts right now are that this powder is not quite as slow as I thought it was. It's more like uh, Reloader 15.2, which is okay. And I found a bunch more load data. I happened to be on the Powder Valley website, seeing if they had any in stock and what their price was. Because, oh, that's another thing. So in the last video I mentioned, I paid 60 bucks for this. I don't expect that. That's not normal. Like this should be a normally priced powder. But over on Powder Valley, they had a link that said load data and I clicked on it and it's a whole, a whole sheet of stuff from Alliant. And it has got, it's got more on it. It's got 6.5 Grendel data, which I didn't see on the website, along with a bunch of other stuff. So speaking of 6.5 Grendel, so I've got a lot more hope for the Grendel with this powder now than I did before we started this video. I didn't expect that we could fit enough of this in the case to hit pressure in six arc. We clearly could. So it's faster burning than I thought it was and the charge weights need to be a little lower than I thought. And now that I see that there is actually some Grindle data from Alliant, it's got me thinking maybe, maybe it'll be better than I anticipated. At least for heavies, like 130s to 140s in Grindle, it might be perfect. So, so here's where I want to go next. I want to test, you know, it, it claims, it claims to be temperature stable. So the next video, I want to test that. I want to test it a, a, against a bunch of other powders in multiple cartridges, including, you know, Varget and several others, Reloader 15 and so on. So that'll be the next video. And then at that point, I guess I'm probably going to need to look at what we've learned from the last video and this video and then pick some direction to go, right? Like actually start narrowing things down, pick a cartridge, pick a bullet, and see if we can work up a load. Very, very encouraged by excellent SD numbers almost across the board in these first two videos. Like I mentioned out on the range, this, this powder is seeming a lot like, or it's seeming similar to Varget. In 308 today with the 200 grain burger, charge weights, velocity, just about everything lined up. So we'll need to investigate that in some other cartridges and see if it, if it holds true. So that's it. I think we'll just end it here. No profound analysis yet, right? Still have a whole lot more questions than answers, but that's it for today. See you guys next time.